that's not going to affect the other two scenes, right? No, because it's off in those scenes. Yeah. Hi, Jakey. What's, what's after Marigold? It's smiles. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll use that. We'll use that to like change the tone. We won't do the full thing. Yeah, I was gonna say like we'll just we'll just uh, maybe like half of it or something. Yeah, not even just we'll just we'll need like 30, 45 seconds to change yeah, the tone. Because right. there's a lot of that's the one thing is there's a lot of breaks. Yeah. In this middle part because because Ghost in, is in a different tuning from Scarlet, which is a different tuning from Marigold, which is a different tuning from. Uh, smile. So we're gonna have breaks for all of those. Oh, I said, why did you do that? I don't know. I ask these questions when I say how we're gonna put a set together. I bring these things up, and everyone's like, it's fine. So it is what it is. If you guys want to change it, change the order. There is no so problem with that. It's fine. Yeah. Just Alex just loves to complain. You guys just need mad guitar techs that just toss you the guitars. <laughs> dun, dun. On that last one, lights drop, and then rub top. Then Reptile starts. Okay. Hey, do you guys think I should be coming in where I am coming in? Or where, like, the snare drum is playing triplets? I'm coming in where Spencer does, it's coming down. Or no, I'm sorry, before that. No, 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 no. I, I like where you're coming in. I like it too. You're coming in where you come in on the album. Attention. Yeah, there's just orchestral drums playing yeah. before that. I mean, unless you feel strongly otherwise, I thought that was good. I don't care if you guys are cool with it. No, I think it was good. All right, let's do it. So much in this industry comes down to sheer luck. It's probably not the answer that people want to hear, but it's the truth. And one thing that we got very lucky with is our fan base. We didn't choose to have such a loyal fan base, but we are so damn grateful to have such a loyal fan base. We're one of those really lucky bands where our fans are, they're in it. Like they, they know the band, they know all the music, they know the individual members, they know the trivia, they know the vitals, like they, they know everything. And it makes us feel really good because what we're doing, we're just existing. Like Periphery just is, and we just do what feels right to us and it resonates with the, these, this specific group of people. And you really can't ask for better listeners. I think I'm, I'm definitely one of many of my bandmates who have been able to build and maintain friendships with some of the people that have been coming to our shows since, you know, 2009. I love being a singer, man. It's like, you know, I, I grew up as a guitar player, and then once I switched over to, to singing primarily, 
you know, there's there's no other feeling like it, like getting on stage and having your body as your instrument, and it's like a workout and like a, I don't know, it's like a spiritual high at the same time. For the past year and a half of touring that we've done for Hill Stan, I'd say basically all of my favorite live moments stem from playing the new material live. Uh, there's so much work and so much anticipation that goes into you know the build up of an album release uh, not to mention the recording of the record itself but leading up to it you're just kind of itching to get out there and not only show the world the songs but to to perform them for everybody and uh, there's a reason you know when you came out to see any of the hail stand shows uh, in 2019 and 2020 why you know over half the set list was from hail stand not only because we feel it's our strongest work, but it's just we're, we're bursting at the seams to play this stuff live. So, I mean, there's just, there's nothing like, you know, the first time you play a reptile. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I think, the song that we're all most proud of. And, you know, the first time you play that, it's, it's this weird cocktail of, of nerves, anxiety, but also uh, crazy excitement. This last U.S. tour we did was our second tour with the Pliny crew, and um, I had heard a rumor that they they like to partake in screaming as a whole band at the end of the show or at the end of the night. Yeah! 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 I forget who it was. It might have been Simon or Pliny, but they were like, "Yeah, mate, we're gonna get you to scream. Absolutely gonna happen on this tour." And I was like, dude, there's no way. I'm not going to sing to that level. I'm not screaming with you guys. I don't know how to explain it, but there's a lot of screaming that will sort of happen for no reason at all times, at any time. Probably at the worst times, to be quite honest. But it's very infectious. And it was something that sort of took over the whole tour. And I'm not entirely sure what the story is behind this. I didn't really feel the need to ask. And perhaps I don't want to know the answer to this. Oh, 
I said party. Oh, I said the party song, baby. <laughs> Yeah, man. It's gonna be. I think this is gonna be the 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 hot one. The way that it just feels tight up there. We get some fucking Metallica risers. It's tight. I have no idea what I'm talking about. No idea what I'm doing. I'm 35 years old, and uh, I have no direction on it. The state of the world and, and the way that this pandemic has effectively shut down the music business really makes you take stock of what touring and playing music live really means because it's very easy to take it for granted. You know, the current state of the world in this pandemic has certainly made me feel extra grateful for what we get to do for a living. Um, and, and pretty much every aspect of it, you know, as, as complex as it can be to travel from place to place all over the world and all the logistics that go into it, the, the simplicity of just being around people, um, your bandmates, your crew, living on a bus, having that family sort of mentality and vibe and the shared experience of going everywhere together and eating you know in restaurants together and going to coffee shops that we've never been to before or coffee shops that we look forward to visiting every time we're in that particular location these are all things that we really can't do now yeah super weird for me i mean i'm sure for everybody else in the band as well but it's like you know you start out a year on your career high and things just seem, seem to keep getting better and better and then everything's just kind of swept out from underneath you and you know all your friends are feeling it who who are touring with you you know have, have been touring with us throughout the years and just seeing everybody go through these hardships and uh and you know seeing everybody miss the camaraderie of being together out on the road you know you kind of take it for granted and um yeah you know there are definitely those times where you're on the road where you you know you want to be back home and now me looking back on ever feeling like that I feel stupid for it because uh you know like being out there with my brothers in the band that's like one of my favorite places to be and in being stuck at home right now really makes that apparent <laughs> I, I choked on that one. I could choke on the bad acting on that one. All right. <clears throat> oh shit. Fuck. Actually, no, no. Here, hold up for one second. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Just bury me. That was great. I oh wait. Actually. Oh fuck. Actually. Fuck. 
fuck. Yo, he's fucked up. See this? Fuck. We don't have fuck. towels yet. Fuck. Saskatoon. I think we have only one song today that requires an alternate Saskatooning. <laughs> and cut. <laughs> it's a little funny. Funny when you say bitch. That's not when I said not very funny, but when you say muy divertido, muy funny, muy cool, man, muy cool, man. No, no, no. Yes. Let's do it. <clears throat> Just gotta. So the current situation with uh, COVID, coronavirus, whatever you want to call it, has definitely put a damper on all sort of touring and music activities that one would do on the road. And it's interesting because not very long ago I was a bit burnt out on touring and I even questioned whether I wanted to do it at all moving forward. Taking a little bit of a break with Periphery 4 and just a break from touring in general really helped and I had a genuine blast on these past few runs to where I was excited to go back on the road. We were slated to be playing some shows and festivals this summer and those are all canceled now. So we are at home for the foreseeable future. We don't really have anything planned and it's kind of interesting timing because I am ready to go back out on the road, which is not a feeling that I've had for a very long time. That second to last day on the last tour where I got crazy sick, I, I don't know what I had, if it was coronavirus or what the fuck, dude. <laughs> it sucked, though. I like Within a matter of like six hours of getting it, my voice was completely gone. And, uh, you know, I woke up that morning at the Fillmore and didn't know if I was going to be able to perform or not. And after a few hours, I was like, oh, there's no way. Like, I would have just shredded my voice. So, you know, I had to sit back with Ronnie at the sound booth and watch the band. And even though it sucked, you know, like not being able to take part in the glory of like a hometown show, you know, where there's tons of people there, it's loud. It was one of the sickest crowds of the whole tour. It was still really cool to get to see, you know, my band performing from an audience perspective. In, in such a good venue like that. Like it was, like I felt like I was a fan for that show and that's the first time I've ever been able to do that. So yeah, even though it sucked, uh, it was still kind of cool. The last couple of dates, Spencer got sick and he was unable to sing and that makes me the de facto front man. And so we didn't have Spencer and Mark wasn't on the tour. So we were playing as a three piece, which is so weird for us, but we were able to make it happen. And uh, you know, I'm not a front man. I don't claim to be a front man. I don't really like being a front man. I think Spencer does a great job and it makes me respect how hard his job is. But it seemed to go over as well as it could have. And that's kind of what sticks out in my mind. Um, but on the very last day in New York City, which is a hometown show for me, Spencer was able to come out, and uh, I think people were really happy that he was able to at least come out and sing a few songs, and it was just a really great show overall.
One of the cooler things for me is being able to look out in the crowd and see a lot of these familiar faces who I, who I know for a fact, um, you know, they've been at every show in that city for years. Um, but seeing them right next to people who are brand new to us. And I can always tell because they are hearing some of these songs for the first time. You know, they'll be singing the words to Garden the Bones or singing the words to It's Only Smiles. But when we play, you know, something from Juggernaut, they're checking their phone, <laughs> you know? Uh, and I kind of like that as a challenge because it, it tells me something. It tells me that this person's a new fan, which is always hard for me to believe because part of me always kind of assumes that if you know who Periphery is, maybe you've grown with us over the years. You're part of our journey. You know, I, I, I live in the Periphery bubble, so I automatically just assume that you've been in that bubble with me for over the years, watching us progress throughout our career. But that always kind of hits me. It's like, oh, okay, this person only knows the new stuff. That's cool. All right, let's, let's, let's play some old songs and, uh, and uh, you know, expose them to, to where we've come from. Uh, and that's why we always still like to play those older songs. You know, we're just a bunch of normal dudes and we all sort of connect on the same interests and that's kind of why it all makes sense. And, um, you know, it's it's always really nice that when we go to certain cities, especially to be able to just know that you're going to get to hang out with some of those people. And, you know, to be fair, there there's some that we've definitely taken to more than others. There's some who have really, you know, shown their true colors as just great people and, and you know, have really been there for us. If I had to think of two people, and there's a lot, so I don't want to, I don't want to um, skip anybody, but, but there are two people that I want to mention, and um, their names are Ryan and Lara Vermeland, and um, I remember touring back in 2009, they let us stay at their house and have been coming out year after year ever since any time that we've been in or near St. Louis. And they're just great people. They are so fun to be with, they're so supportive. It's like seeing family. And I mean, you know, how great of a person do you have to be to open your doors to a bunch of vagabonds living out of a van playing music every night that you don't know? You know, it's like, that was so cool of them to do that at that time. And any chance that we can show them that same hospitality now, it's something that we want to do, and I really I love the both of them. And again, there, there's so many great people that we've met because they've supported our band. And the, again, the list is just super long, and and that's a great thing. You know, it it, it really shows that the people going above and beyond for us, and and um, I hope that they feel like we can go above and beyond for them too.
Can you guys feel the love in the 